Hi everyone, I'm Bernhard and in this video I want to show you how you can use Rock Frontend to bring your process via frontend development to the next level. So what is Rock Frontend? Rock Frontend is a progressive module. That means you can install it on new projects but also on existing ones. Rock Frontend requires zero setup. That means you don't need to install Composer, NPM whatsoever. It will just work out of the box. It does not force you to use an opinionated folder structure but it will help you to make your projects better organized and therefore keep it easier to maintain and easier to scale. The goal of Rock Frontend is to help you develop better websites in less time. Now in this video I want to show you how uh, live reloading works, then I want to show you the render method, then I want to show you how you can include and manage your site assets. Um, after that we will cover Alfred and how you can use it to get better frontend editing experience and last but not least I will show you how I'm using custom page classes to get the super simple yet powerful MVC pattern in process wire. Let's jump right in. Okay, so here we have a fresh installation of process wire. There are no modules installed and we have the latest dev version. The front end looks like this. So basically nothing um, special here. It's just the default profile that comes with the uh, regular process wire installation. Let's head over to the main markup file and this is what we see here on the right side. Uh, note that here it says homepage content whereas here it says default content. That's because the default profile uses um, process wires markup regions. So the diff with the ID content is replaced on the homepage with this content here. So let's change that homepage content demo. We save that, we reload the page and we see um, the change text here. So um, the first thing we want to do is to install uh, Rock Frontend. So we go to the back end of the site and um, I just need to download Rock Frontend. I will do that using Git sub modules, but you can um, simply download the module from, from the modules directory once it is um, published. So now it's cloning the sub-module into the site modules folder and we have rock frontend in the site modules folder. And once we do a modules refresh, we should see rock frontend um, ready to install so we can install it. And after installing, it will show you uh, some information about uh, available profiles. So there's two profiles at the moment, the blank profile and the UI kit profile. I can show you quickly what that does. So it basically gives you, gives you a quick start if you don't want to set up your project manually, um, which is especially handy when you're starting in a new project. But um, if you want to install Rock Frontend on an existing project, then um, I would not uh, recommend to install the uh, one of the profiles because it will overwrite your files. So um, let's do a quick git commit. Um, you can really want to change the home template and we say install rock front end and now if I install one of these profiles let's take the UI kit profile and submit that we should see that there are several changes in our project so it changed the main up, main markup file um, it added some default uh, layouts or one default layout and a footer head a footer latte file and a header latte file etc um, we can quickly see what the front end looks like. And first it says um, that it cannot parse the less file because we need to install the less module. But we can ignore that and we see the, fro uh, the front end looks totally different. But um, you can play around with the profiles um, and I will revert these changes and I will go through uh, all the options of Rock Frontend step by step so that you understand all the details. So let's revert all that and reload the page. Then we have the initial setup. And now the first thing I want to show you is how you can get live reloading into your site. And that's very simple because you don't need to install NPM or any other tools like browser sync or whatsoever. You just go to the config PHP file um, you need to make sure that debug mode is enabled and that you're logged in as a super user. And 
if that is the case, then you can simply um, set the config variable live reload equals one. And once you save that, we should already get live reloading. So you need to do a manual refresh once more. And here we go. We see Rock Frontend is listening for changes and every second it says no change. So let's um, change something here and let's remove the default uh, content div with a custom section. And let's say it is I am the main section and now we should see that once it hits save, uh, the page on the right side should update almost immediately. Here we go. So that's a really, really nice feature. And as you can see, it's just adding a config setting. So you can just install Rock Frontend and use it on an existing project. Um, the nice thing about this uh, live reload feature is that it does not only work uh, on the front end, but also on the back end. Hey everybody, I just wanted to give you a quick introduction to Rock Migrations because uh, instead of just talking about it, I wanted to show you how, how it works. Uh, I did that after I finished the video, so some parts are slightly different, but it should not matter. So I just installed Rock Migrations and now you can see what I was talking about. Here we have the homepage and here we have the site migrate file and now we can simply create a new field. Um, we call it demo one and we say it's type text and then we can do uh, add field to template take the demo one field add it to the home template and once we save that file we instantly get the reload of the page and we have our new file here and now we could for example say rock migrations set uh, field data and we take again the demo one field and we change the label to our full label. And we save the file and the backend reloads and we get the reload here. Yeah, so you see that's uh, very handy when working with rock migrations. Now back to topic. The next thing I want to show you is the render method. That's uh, one of the fundamental concepts of Rock Frontend. So we can remove all the initial markup here and let's view the homepage so that we see what we are doing. And let's say we wanted to add a header and the main section and a footer. So we add a header and say, I am the header. Then we add the main section, I am the main section. And then we add the footer, I am the footer. Surprise. So we save that and we see the three sections here. Um, and now to uh, not um, put everything in the main markup file, we can uh, use rock frontend's render method to split, um, to split up our project into several files. So uh, rock frontend is an autoload module and it registers the rock frontend API variable. So in every uh, template file, you can simply refer to rock frontend via the rock frontend um, variable. So we say rock frontend render um, sections header dot PHP. Now we can save that and we will see that it does nothing at the moment because of course this file does not exist yet. So we have to um, create this file and we go to site templates uh, we already have the sections folder. That's because we installed the uh, UI kit profile and it created the sections folder. And when we did the reword via Git, um, it didn't remove the folder, but you can simply create the folder uh, manually and then add a uh, header.php file here. And let's call it header. And I am the rendered header. We saved that and we got the rendered header here on top so we can remove the uh, header that we have had before. And um, just a little trick that uh, makes working with uh, Rock Frontend or with uh, Process Y in general a lot easier is these um, type hints that we already have on the top for the page variable, the pages variable and the config variable. Um, you can do the same 
for rock frontend. So we copy this line and we tell it that rock frontend variable is equal to the rock front end uh, object. Now, once we do that, we get nice um, helpers from our IDE and it knows what we are doing or, or what we can do. So if we do the same again, um, it will suggest uh, the render method. Then we instantly see that there is also a render if and a render layout. So let's put the main section and the footer in um, an external file as well. Um, one thing that I didn't uh, note before is that you can uh, use uh, long paths in the render method. So uh, that has the benefit that you will get um, code completion like this. Um, so we go to site, templates, sections, um, main.php and we copy that and do the same for the footer. Then we can remove these two, save it um, and create these files. So the main.php um, and the footer.php. So it's a little bit cleaner now and sometimes it's just nicer to have um, um, short paths so you can simply remove the side templates and just keep the sections folder here and what you can also do is you can remove the file extension if you want or if, if that um, sometimes it's handy sometimes it is uh, better to be more uh, verbose um, just for the demo we will remove it and we will see uh, that it still works so one nice thing about this render method is that it can not only render PHP files but also LATTE files. Um, if we change the main LAT, main PHP file into main.latte file uh, we see that it still works and um, I can show you that it is really uh, parsing LATTE syntax by adding um, some LATTE markup on the main section um, and I am viewing, I'm viewing, you are viewing page title the page like this maybe and you have in the page home so nice so this is um, obviously a uh, latte markup and we could also do an uh, anchor link to the to edit the current page so we do page uh, edit URL and we say edit we save it and we got the link here so one very nice feature of LATTE is the so-called N attributes feature. So we can here simply add, uh, add the N colon if attribute and tell LATTE to only render this anchor link if the user is logged in. So N if user is, or actually not if it is logged in, but if the current uh, page is edible, editable. So if page editable then render this link and if it is not an editable then uh, don't render it so let's go to the back end and log out quickly so we are logged out and once we reload the page we don't see the link and once we are logged in we see the link so that's one of the features that i really love about latte because it keeps your um, templates very very clean and um, it, it just saves you so many unnecessary if else else if and um, yeah I, I just really like this um, this syntax but obviously that's um, a matter of preference so you could also use um, other template engines like uh, twig for example so let's say that the footer is a twig template file so we can um, replace the extension and um, render footer dot twig and we re uh, when we reload the page we see that um, it does not render the footer that's because you need to install twig if you want to use it because rock frontend ships with uh, latte but it does not ship with all the other template engines that uh, are around so install twig um, and you need to compose and you just need to use compose required twig version um, 
here is the right version then we cd into the um, process via root directory muse compose require twig and now we should get the footer um, uh, footer dot twig I need to uh, to add the extension here because it does not look for all the available um, file extensions yeah in this case it is better to use the, the to add the, the to add the extension to your uh, file path let's see if that's uh, a twig file and it can render twig syntax so let's copy some of the example uh, I don't know let's take this one and maybe for um, a page maybe like this in no for uh, item methods. that's okay item in I know that works let's write page children um, should be item URL and item title let's save it and see what happens on the footer there's nothing to see but maybe we just need to create a visible page test one save publish and add another and test two and yep here we have the two items so twig is obviously working and yeah I'm just not a fan of this syntax because uh, it's different to the process via API and I know the process via process via API the best and I know PHP so for me it's just uh, easier to use a lot than Twig but you can also use Twig if you want um, that's totally up to you but as you can see in this example it's really just a few lines of code to integrate any um, template engine you want into Rob Frontend Okay, the next um, thing I want to show you is the render if. So let's say we wanted to render um, one section, like the hero section, only if we are on a basic page or um, yeah, hero dot latte, and then we say section and h1, I am the hero section. Now, uh, this section should appear on all of our pages. Yep. And let's say we want to render this only on the home page. Then we can go to the main markup file and say render if. And the second parameter can be a process via selector. And we can say template equals home. We save that and it is visible on the home page, but not on the test one and not on the test two page. So a uh, very easy a way to. Um, to keep your main markup file uh, clean. And actually, that is all you need for a better project uh, setup. And for simple projects, that's really um, good enough. But if you have more complex um, projects, you can use the render layout um, method. I can show you that quickly. So render layout, then the first parameter is the page and um, let's remove all the rest and save that see what it does it renders nothing because we don't um, have any layouts uh, set up yet so I always place them or I think you have to place them in the layouts uh, folder and then we create the default layout and um, let's place the same markup here and we get our markup back um, now if you use render layout then you can create layouts um, depending on the template of the currently viewed page so I can say I am the home layout and save that and now it renders for the home page the home layout and for the test one page it, page, it still renders the default uh, layout. So that's just another way um, how to, to structure your projects. And then you can get rid of this uh, render if, because we could um, use this as default layout and then copy those sections and uh, render the hero section on the home layout and don't render it on the default layout so now on the default layout 
we don't see the hero section and on the home layout we see the hero section so it's also uh, yeah, just another way to structure your project okay now what about site assets until now we were just adding markup to the body but um, we didn't do anything with uh, site assets so let's say we wanted to add some less files to get some um, styling to our page and let's say we wanted to add the ui kit framework just because i can show you what is built into rock frontend because i'm using ui kit on every project so i've built this ui kit download feature where you can select all the ui kit uh, versions it will get that from uh, github so this will always be up to date and we take the latest version click submit and we see that we have 200 new files here and it's a most composer stuff that we need for uh for twig so we can add um we add the vendor folder first and say add twig then um yeah here we see site templates UI kit free and also we can add site templates ui kit and say uh add ui kit and yeah here we have the the changed markup files that we created during the video um so we can also add those uh git add all and that work in progress um so now let's add some let's add uh, the ui kit css and the ui kit uh, javascript file to our head so what you could do is create a, a link tag but yeah if you're like me and you can't remember the correct syntax um, it might be easier for you to uh, just use rock front and to include those uh, assets so we uh call the rock front and variable and then we uh, request the styles and then we add a style um, and we take site templates ui kit um, for the style we need or we don't need but you could uh, use the distribution folder and then the css but we are using uh, a less file so we are uh, we will use the um, source folder and then the less folder and then we take the ui kit theme less well let's try if that already works uh, it says um, install the less module for parsing the less theme so we install the less module and we go back to the front page yep and we see ui kit um, is already working and we can now simply modify all the less variables that UI kit has to offer um, if we wanted to use a slider or something um, then we can do the same for the scripts so requ request uh, rock frontend scripts and add site templates UI kit now we use the distribution folder because we don't want to modify the JavaScript um, and we use the minified UI kit version and save that and we don't see any changes but uh, yeah that's just because all the markup we have until now is not um, needing any javascript we can git add site modules to get rid of those changes and install a less module so we see we have changed the main markup file and we also see that it has created a head css in site templates bundle and if we inspect the um, markup of the page we see that rock frontend added some styles here that is the newly created uh, head css and we see it also automatically added a timestamp for cache busting so you don't have to think about opening the the dev tools and make sure that you have disabled caching um, whenever you change a file and the browser reloads it will get the latest version and you can't end up with an old version from the cache and you're wondering why your changes do not appear in the browser and you're wasting time uh, just to realize that uh, it was loading a file from cache so that should not happen to you when using rock frontend so let's add a simple less file just to show you how i'm usually working on my sections I go to site template sections and um, let's go to the uh, yeah doesn't matter let's take the footer and create a footer dot uh, less file 
and then we say f the footer element has a padding of uh, 50, 40 pixels and has a border of 5 pixels already red. Now we save that file. Um, the page refreshed, but we don't see the change, of course, because we need to include this file to our assets. So we say add site templates um, sections footer.less. Now, once we save that, we uh, get the changes in the browser. And if we wanted to do the same for the main file and for the uh, header file, we can do a shortcut. Let's create the less files first. So we create the header.less file and say um, header element has a padding of 20 pixels and has a border of 5 pixels solid blue. And then the main file has main.less and the main element has a padding of uh, 20 pixels again and a border of 5 pixels solid green. Now, if we save that, um, we don't see the uh, less applied to the main and to the header, of course, because we didn't add them. And what I like to do is to not add every single file uh, manually. And that's why Rock Frontend comes with the add all method. And there you can simply um, do site templates sections and then it will uh, include and uh, watch all of those uh, less files and include them at once. And of course, because it supports magic paths, we can get rid of the long versions, save it and it still works. Um, to prove that, let's change the footer from red to, I don't know, pink, save that and we get the change in the browser. That's it so far about uh, asset handling. Um, one little detail that you might have noticed is that I was just adding styles here and not actually rendering or echoing the output. And we could just move all that to the top and then remove the markup in the head section completely. We save that and we still get the same output. Um, that's because Rock Frontend hooks into the page render process and after the whole page has rendered, it will then inject the scripts to the end of the head section. The benefit of using the injection feature of the site assets is that you can include scripts from within your sections that are actually rendered in the body. Yeah, let's show that. Uh, let's remove the less sections so we get the plain UI kit theme. And now we could, in the, the main LUTTER file, we could inject the main less file uh, from within our uh, LUTTER render file. So the rock frontend um, API variable is available in the LUTTER files as well, and also in Twig files. And then we uh, request the styles, and then we add site templates sections um, main dot less and once we save that we see that the less file from the main uh, latte section is also rendered into the page head i hope that makes sense and let's go to the next topic so the next thing i want to show you is alfred which is a lovely front end editor and you may have noticed that it says Alfred is ready. And that's another advantage of using Rock Frontend's styles and scripts injection feature. Now Alfred is ready, but it does not show up. Um, let's say we wanted to add a new field, uh, a body field of type text area. And um, let's say it's a CK editor field with some HTML markup. And then we add um, this field to uh, the basic page and to the home page after the title field. So um, uh, some text here and we don't see this text because we didn't include it in our latte file so let's create another div and then we echo our page body um, so we get the page body here but as we are using latte and latte has additional security we need to uh, add the no escape filter, no escape, to get HTML markup that comes from the CK editor field. And um, 
front-end editing in Process Wire works really, really nicely with uh, text fields. So we can simply call page uh, not get body. That's what this, uh, if you're referring to the property, like we did before, it's actually doing a page get uh, behind the scenes. And instead of doing a page get, we do a page edit. And now we have front-end editing for our text field. So that is really, really great. And a really nice feature. But unfortunately, this does only really work well for text fields or text area fields. Let's add an image gallery to this page, for example. So we create another field and we call it gallery and type images. Maximum number should be all fine. And then we should just be able to add that to our templates after the body field. And then we can edit this test page and add some pictures. And say save and view. Uh, we don't see the gallery, of course, because we need to edit. And we add an image tag with the source of we can do some latte magic again as so we say n for each um, for each page images as image so we can refer to the image as a dollar image and then um, let's resize it to to a fixed size of 100 by 100 and take the URL for the source attribute and then some alt tag and once we save that we um, get null page images e why don't we get some images uh, we ca called it gallery of course gallery so we save it and view it and we get some images here but why don't we get the correct images um, of course I have to add latte text here and we save it and we get an instant reload and we get the images so we have the images on our page but how would we edit them to make the gallery editable we can use Alfred and we can inject Alfred just with the Alfred uh, function call, Alfred, then we give it the uh, uh, current page. And uh, I can show you what happens if we do that, um, because we get an error and say that says invalid JSON in Alfred, don't forget no escape filter. So we add the no escape filter to the Alfred um, function call. Once we save that, we have Alfred Markup here. And Alfred Markup has um, two nice features. Um, the first is that we get front-end editing as a pop-up. And um, we can further improve that by telling Alfred to only uh, render this for uh, several fields. So um, we say fields equals um, gallery. Now it should only view the gallery field and we can move the boat image to the first place, save that and we get an instant reload of the page. So that's in my opinion a really, really uh, nice way to edit websites that everybody understands. And the second part is this uh, code icon that appears only for super users. Um, once you click that and you have set up your uh, environment correctly, it will bring you directly to the file that is responsible for rendering this um, portion of markup. So let's close um, all files and just open the config file. And then I will copy um, some markup from another project. Um, here Rock Frontend uses the local root path setting of Tracy Debugger. So if you already have Tracy installed, you might already have a, a working uh, Alfred uh, setting as well but if not simply 
set the local root path um, to the path of your project. So my project is in YouTube rock frontend and we don't need this setting. So once we save that, we got the reload in the background and now, yep, it takes us directly to the uh, latte file where we called the uh, Alfred method. So that's very, very helpful when working on a project that you might not have fresh in your head or maybe also when working on a project in a team. So the last thing I want to show you is how I'm using custom page classes as a simple but very powerful MVC pattern in process wire. MVC stands for model view controller, where the model is responsible for the data or the uh, connection to the database. The view is the graphical user interface and the controller is the brain or the business logic. Now, the great thing about MVC is that it helps you to get a better separation of concerns, which is great for many reasons. What is also great is that ProcessWire takes care of the model part. For the few files, we have the template files in ProcessWire and for the controller, we have custom page classes. Now, actually, you don't need Rock Frontend to get an MVC pattern in ProcessWire, but I wanted to add this to the video because there are other modules that implement an MVC pattern and I wanted to show why it is not part of Rock Frontend and how I'm using custom page classes to get the same thing just by using core utilities. If you haven't used custom page classes, go to the docs and see the blog post about custom page classes. It's really a great feature and it's very, very easy to use. For that, um, I will install uh, Tracy Debugger first because it makes it a little more obvious what's going on. And now I can show you that when um, watching a basic page, then the current page is actually a process wire page object. And that's because we haven't set up a custom page class for this type of page. Uh, if we head over to the home page and do the same for the home page, then we see that the home page is actually a, not a process wire page, but a process wire home page object. That's a small little different difference um, and we see that the default profile already comes with the home page page class it has nothing in it it just uh, says class home page extends page so you will have the same methods and you will have the same behavior for both uh, page types but um, you can use custom page classes to uh, build totally custom um, page objects so for example Let's say we wanted the basic page to have a custom page class. So uh, we simply add the base basic page page.php file. And we say it's uh, namespace process wire. And it is the class basic page page, which extends the process wire page. Now once we save that and we got the reload in the background and uh, we visit the test one page which is a basic page we see it's not anymore a process wire page but a process wire basic page page. So now we can add um, custom methods here so for example um, do something returns um, I did something now we can access the do something method and it returns I did something and we can not only do that from the Tracy console but also from our templates so for example uh, let's say we wanted to uh, add a uh, gallery header gallery header and then we return this is the gallery header for page and it's not dollar page but it's dollar this so that this uh, variable refers to the current uh, page and now in our template file we can 
for example, add page gallery header and simply output the gallery header in this headline. So that's it for today. I hope everything made sense. Um, the MVC part obviously makes more sense in more complex projects, but as you have seen, it is uh, very easy to get started with and you can also use it for just small parts of your project and get used to the uh, process and then simply do the same thing for more complex projects and you don't have to learn any new things then. The video already got far too long, but it is my first video. It only took me two months to get this uh, video published. So I hope you liked it. I hope that maybe Rock Frontend can help you in your daily work as well. Please let me know what you think in the comments below or in the process wire forum. See you there.